Hello and welcome to Middlebury Edition. I'm Middlebury Representative Robin Shai, your host for the program. Middlebury Edition was created primarily for the purpose of educating Middlebury residents about local services and activities and to provide an opportunity for local nonprofits to talk about their work. Today's guest is Sarah Kearns, Area Advisor for Addison County of the Small, Vermont Small Business Development Center, or SBDC. The SBDC provides no-cost professional expertise and guidance to business owners and people who want to be business owners. I worked with the SBDC and with Sarah in my previous life running the Addison County Economic Development Corporation several years ago. I found the SBDC to be an invaluable resource for businesses, business owners in all stages of growth. Sarah has brought with her some clients that she's been working with, and it'll be fun to hear their story in just a little bit. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Robin. It's great yeah, to be with it's you. It's great to be with you. This is so much fun. So, Sarah, let's start with the Vermont Small Business Development Center. Uh, tell me about what it is and what you do. Sure. Thank you, Robin. So, we have a motto, which I think kind of says it all, which is you might be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So, the whole idea being that our reason for being is to support small business in Vermont. And I would say we're about 25% working with just startups, entrepreneurs, uh, who you're going to meet shortly, and about 75% of who we work with are existing businesses. And uh, one of my wonderful mentors always described it as, you know, whatever it is that's kind of keeping you up at night, you know, you're scratching your head thinking, you know, I've got a problem to solve. And it could be something good. You know, it could be that your business is growing, or it could be something difficult. Uh, you know, you're trying to figure out your cash flow. So I just think of us as a good resource to turn to. Um, and everything is confidential, which I, I think is important when we live in a, Vermont is really a small town. So confidential mm -hmm. and really the core of it is one-to-one -one advising. And my particular job, I am the business advisor for Addison County, which I really enjoy. And then I also have a, another role, which is that I work with young college age entrepreneurs across the state. So I always say uh, I have the best job in SBDC and the most fun because I work with young people who have creative ideas mm -hmm. and um, I think that our younger entrepreneurs, uh, it doesn't matter if they're you know, in school or out of school or whatever path they're taking, um, I think that they don't see obstacles maybe in the same way that, that some of the older entrepreneurs or someone like me might. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes that you know, comes also with its uh, tricky points. But I think when you are creative and excited and you go for it and you don't yeah. see obstacles, you also come up with some pretty interesting products and services. Yeah. So, uh, so anyone watching who is starting a business, would love to hear from them. Uh, we also have a How to Start Your Own Business workshop, which is free online. And so that's sort of what we do. That's great. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like your description of working with uh, folks who's, it's sort of the, um, how can we make this work instead of we can't do it because. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and no day, no day is like the next day, which is one of the fun parts about yes. the job. So all different industries. Um, and another you know, thing I often think about is, you know, it's not that we or I have all the answers. But hopefully we yeah. have access to different resources. We work with, you know, Fred Kenny at Addison County Economic Development. You know, we used to work with you when you yeah. were there. So a lot of it is just helping people know, you know, what resources to yeah. turn to. So yeah. by no means am I the only resource that these gentlemen have used, and I'm sure they'll sure. talk about that. Sure, that's great. And um, you don't actually have to have, um, like, a whole business plan before somebody comes to visit you, right? They could have an idea or... Maybe, yeah. maybe they're questioning whether starting their own business is actually for right. them in the first place. Is it good to talk to you then, too? Yes, that's great. And, and I think sometimes a measure of success is deciding that you actually shouldn't start the business. <laughs> <laughs> and our website is filled with resources, you know, business plan templates. Um, and I'm always happy to have a 15-minute conversation with someone before we go back and forth with a lot of email. You know, and if someone wants to send me a business plan, it doesn't have to look good. You know, it can be bullet points. It could be, you know, chicken scratches, post-it notes, you know, whatever but just some, some sense of what your idea might be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we also have a great new series on the website called Know Your Numbers. So if people Jeez. are intimidated by numbers or finance, which I completely understand many people are, although yeah. it's just a different language, uh, there's a great <laughs> <That's> resource <right. laughs> for people to learn about you know, a finance on the website as well. Uh -huh. Great. 
Great. All right. Well, you have said that you uh, like talking with students and working with students. And to that end, we are very fortunate today to have three um, just recently graduated Middlebury College students with us today to talk about their business. Um, we have Alex Shem on my left, uh, Nathaniel Klein, and Jacob Friedman with us. And they have started a business called Treeline Terrains, which makes 3D wood carved landscape models. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about that. So welcome, all of you gentlemen. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks for coming. So tell me to start with, sort of what inspired you? How did you come up with this? We'll talk about your products, which are really cool. But how, what inspired you to start this business in the first place? How did that happen? Well, <clears throat> as many great ideas start, it was an accident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these were actually originally a gift. So we all began as ski and snowboard instructors at the Middlebury College Snow Bowl, just uh -huh. up the road. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yeah. And we started off um, noticing that not a lot of the students who we were friends with on campus at the college, they didn't all appear to be at the, at the snow bowl on the slopes. We thought, what's, what's the difference here? And we noticed there's huge financial barriers uh -huh. to enter into the skiing world. Yeah. That it's students expensive. on financial aid going to mm -hmm. Middlebury College couldn't always access the snow bowl. And so we started the scholarship program called the Lesson Fund, um, extremely successful. It brought a few hundred kids to the snow bowl that otherwise wouldn't have been there. And it made outdoor mm. sports like skiing and snowboarding accessible to students on financial aid. Our instructors and bosses at the snow bowl were just so wonderful helping make that program a reality because wow. it, it came out of nowhere. We totally built it up from scratch. Wow. And to thank them for all their help and their generosity, we said, you know, it would be a great gift. We'll carve the snow bowl for them. And we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> we were like, yeah, that's a really great idea, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, so through a lot of trial and error, we eventually carved a small model of the snow bowl and gave it to them as a holiday gift and a, and a thank you for helping us out. And from there, it really took off. We went on mm -hmm. to give a few more gifts to graduating instructors at the snow bowl. And we kept receiving feedback like, you have to sell these. This is the most wonderful product ever. We really think you should sell these. And we were like, no, no, no. Like, we're just giving them as gifts. We're in college. Like, we're, this is just for fun. <laughs> and eventually it did become a business. And so we've graduated now and we've expanded from selling just ski mountains to any landscape that you want. We'll do lakes, rivers, um, maps of campuses, or we'll put your ski house on the ski mountain um, with oh, all the wow. ski trails there as well. So we've really expanded and mm -hmm. now we work with community partners and it's really come a long way from that initial idea yeah. of just giving a gift to our instructors. Yeah. And how, how long ago did the gift idea come up? When did that, when did you make your first carving? I'd say our first carving was about two to three years ago. And the, like winter of 2019, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, yeah, that's right. Cause you were still on campus yeah. then. Yeah. Right. And we were still in school and it was very rudimentary. There were no trails, there were no water features. It was just Worth Mountain, which is where the Snow Bowl is. Yeah. And since then, it's really come a long way. Yeah. And we're going to talk about Worth Mountain and the Snow Bowl in just a minute. Mm -hmm. So we'll have, we have an example that's right by me. So tell us about the actual process to make a piece. Um, I said it's 3D wood carved. And mm -hmm. I can remember when 3D printing came out, and it was sort of a bunch of paper and layers stuck together. and. The, and the machines cost a quarter of a million dollars, and, and I think it's come a long way since then. So tell us more about your process and how sure. you got there. Yeah, so it's similar to 3D printing, but rather than adding material up, we take it away. So it starts, oh. we source our wood from Bristol at A. Johnson's Lumber. Mm -hmm. We buy it in the rough. Uh, so it's been through the sawmill, but it still has some kinks you got to get out. So then mm -hmm. we plane it down, joint it, clean it up, and then we laminate different species together. So if you look at this piece... There's different types of wood, or if mm -hmm. you look at the larger snow bowl behind you, there's even more types yeah. of wood on that. Um, so we glue them together, and it starts as one big block. And then we put it on our CNC router, uh -huh. and we take a digital map that Jacob's created in GIS, upload that to the computer, which controls the machine where to carve, and then it carves the topography that we want. Wow. Um, so it'll go through a rough pass take off a lot of material and then it'll go through a finishing cut where it will add the finer details like the trails okay. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then once that's cut, we'll bring it home, do some sanding, uh, do some oiling. We use a natural linseed oil to mm -hmm. make these shine. And for certain features like lakes or rivers, we add a two-part epoxy that's dyed blue uh, to kind of highlight those features. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and Jacob, you studied geography, geography yeah. right, at Middlebury College. Yes. So you're using your major. Whoever knew it would come into <laughs> something like this, right? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you're well, using all the critical thinking skills exactly, you gained yeah. in whatever classes you took. So, um, so let's talk about this one that's uh, next to me here, mm -hmm. which is the snowball, mm -hmm. and probably a little more um, elaborate than the first gift you made for the... <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> Have you gone back and updated those gifts for those books? <laughs> so I couldn't even really pick this up. It's quite heavy. Um, I don't know if people can tell it, but it's large, so you can mm -hmm. see that it's all solid wood. And there seem to be a lot of layers, mm -hmm. and there's, there's different color woods. There's, there's the lake, the parking lot's down here. So tell us about, a little bit about this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, so that one has five different species of wood. It's pine mm -hmm. on top, then cherry, then ash, then walnut, then maple. Um, wow. And then Lake Pleiad is a two-part epoxy that we dyed blue right there. Uh, but yeah, that was quite an undertaking. So the wood we buy, the largest you can get is about 12 or 13 inches wide because trees only grow so large. Um, mm -hmm. So for that one, we take two boards oh. and put them together and then stack them on top of each other. And that gap between the two woods, you kind of shuffle them to the side to give it a little structure. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all glued up. And you know, then we carve away like we normally do. It just takes a lot longer. That piece probably yeah. took about a week and a half between all the gluing and the processing and the carving and the finishing. Uh, the actual cut time on our machine was probably you know 20 hours or so. Wow. So we're very huh. different for a little model. This is Stowe, which, you know, gets the point across it has all the ski trails and the different types of wood but right. obviously that one is a lot more impressive yeah it's certainly quite big and how many layers are there in something like this are there just Probably. a lot of layers or yeah there's five so there's five layers the five of layers of yeah, the different exactly, woods yeah. okay mm -hmm. okay so one layer for each three. wood oh that has three yeah okay. the bottom two are pretty similar yeah um, okay but yeah it depends on the size of the piece okay. and the height but usually you know two to five layers yeah. is pretty much the highest we've and, gone and how do you decide what kind of wood you want? Uh, it's been a lot of experimentation, but at this point, we are pretty set on what we want. It has to have the right hardness because otherwise there'll be tear out. So the, depending on the grain wow. pattern and how uh, hard mm -hmm. the wood is, the wood chips will kind of cling on and it will look messy and it won't cut mm -hmm. as well or it'll chip off and you'll lose details. So it's the right hardness, but also the right color and things that we think look good together. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks pretty great. That's, and, that's, yeah, and the color that we choose in the maps is actually determined a lot from um, traditional, you know, 3D maps mm. that you'll see, or not 3D maps necessarily, but if you were looking at a trail map, it'll often uh -huh. have this color gradient. And so we try to emulate that same color gradient uh -huh. using the natural colors of the wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're the one spending the time looking at those maps. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and, and how long does it take you to devise the map that will then become the product. Mm, yeah, so when we started out doing this, it took us quite a while to be able to get the trails sort of clinged on to the elevation data. Mm -hmm. But now after developing a bunch of tools to help speed up the process, um, we can make anywhere in the world in about an hour, which is really wow. great. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> That's learned, a learning curve. <laughs> we've learned quite a lot. Um, we've developed really these tools. I actually learned about some of these in my colleges at middle, uh, my classes at Middlebury. Uh -huh. um, we developed these tools to be able to do the processing that we need to make the elevation files really quickly. Wow, wow. And you had to buy equipment, obviously, to do all this. So you have, what do you have for equipment? A bunch of 3D printers or what do you have? How does this work? Uh, yeah, we have one CNC router okay. that we got with uh, a grant from the college. It was the, what was it? It was the... The Mid Innovation Hubs Mid-Challenge Mid -challenge Award. Grant. Uh, which was great and really helped us get oh, started right. because before that we were using a machine in the maker space at the college but because mm -hmm. of covid we didn't really have access to that so it was really great to have our own machine and we oh, had a lot good. more control on how much we were able to cut yeah well the, the pandemic if my math is right or my timing is right you started this in like the winter of 2019 and then you were all sent home in march of 2020 so right. did you hang out here and keep working is that you all had to go home and then you had to figure out how to make this come back and work we were working remotely um we all went home to our respective homes yeah and we were still collaborating a lot online together mm -hmm. and that was actually a really interesting grant that we won because we submitted a four minute video as our grant application but we had oh. to film and edit the video from three different places <laughs> and so that was quite the undertaking but yeah. they liked it enough to award us the money yeah. and so we were able to begin buying our own equipment 
Yeah, that's great. And we were definitely working on the business then, but I would say we really got going this past spring, uh, in the spring of 2020, because mm-hmm. uh, Jacob and I took a course over the remote J-term, the entrepreneurship course at the college, and oh, that, yeah. I think, really said, oh, we're going to do this. Before, it was always something we were working on, but yeah. we really started working on it, you know, spending yeah. the time. Uh, getting maybe a little distracted from our homework um, this past spring. <laughs> you were multitasking. Exactly. No, yeah. in that class, not only did it give us, you know, the resources to be able to work on this business, but it gave us the time to be able to really mm-hmm. focus in. As I was saying with the mapping, it was taking us, you know, a week or two weeks to be yeah. able to develop any one of these landscapes. And through that course, we just had dedicated time to work on this with constant feedback from our peers, from, you know, mm. the faculty members who were running the course through the Vermont Center for Entrepreneurship. And... It just sort of like helped us skyrocket into yeah. what we wanted to do following college. Oh, I bet. I bet. So when did you connect with Sarah at the Small Business Development Center? I, you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. Yeah. <laughs> so long so during, while you were still in college? While we were yeah, still students, we were still I would say. I think it was the spring. Yeah, probably the spring. Yeah. Probably yeah. after we took the course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe during the course. And it might have been, so the course they took, which is amazing, uh, Sam Roach Gerber and Dave Bradbury, Vermont Center oh, yeah. for Emerging Technologies. Yep. They teach the course, and they're awesome about, you know, sending entrepreneurs to to me and to SBDC mm-hmm. maybe for the next steps. And also um, the Innovation Hub at Middlebury College will yeah. connect me with students. So it's kind of funny to say I don't remember how we met. It's probably one of <laughs> yeah. those places. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought that's an amazing idea. Yeah. A really cool idea, and it's it's a beautiful piece of art. It is. It's great. So who are your customers? We have a wide variety of customers, and it really depends on the product that we're selling. Uh-huh. Um, so with something smaller like this, it's a, a fairly inexpensive gift. It's less than $100, and this could go to anybody who's interested in skiing. Whereas our lake models, so this is a familiar landscape, um, Lake Champlain, <laughs> yeah. um, maybe less for our skiers, but more for the folks who just enjoy living in Champlain Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a larger piece, more of a work of art than our mantle top small display. Yeah. And so this is much more expensive, a few hundred dollars for a wall hanging um, that's framed. And the piece next to you is kind of our largest size mm. and that gets up to a few thousand dollars. Yeah. And so yeah. our audience really depends whether it's like skiers, a lot of our friends are ski bums and so we try to keep the <laughs> price point low for them. <laughs> Um, but then we also have friends um, in the art community who we are producing fine art for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think one other thing is, like we said, it really started for skiers. You know, we're making these ski mountains, but it's really right. expanded to any place in the world. So it's really yeah. anyone, because I think everyone has a strong connection to a particular place, whether yeah. they're missing where they grew up or, you know, love where they spend time right now right. or where they go on vacation and ski and hike. So... Anyway. So, yeah, so like if I really have fond memories of hiking Camel's Hump, you could do a Camel's Hump, mm-hmm. which is a pretty distinctive. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a ski area or right, anything. Right. It could be part of the long trail mm-hmm. yeah. or maybe the whole long trail. That, yeah. that would, might be a very long piece of You could put work. your favorite part of the trail up Camel's Hump on the mountain. There you go. Oh. Yeah. And now with our ability to carve buildings, that sort of has expanded, I think, the possibilities oh. even more. So yeah. we have these um, campus models here mm-hmm. of uh, Middlebury College campus and the UVM campus. Uh, Vermont, the the state has a really amazing geographic data set for doing this kind of work. So it's been a great test study for us. um, And we're excited to start expanding this beyond just Vermont. Great. That's great. So you have some standard things you do, and then you have custom work Mm -hmm. that you'll do. And uh, that's great. That's great. So where are you headed from here? What does 2022 look like for you? Yeah, so it's all about growing. Um, right now, we're a pretty young business. We're almost at the end of our first year of being an official business registered in the state of Vermont. Mm-hmm. And we're really looking to take off. So 2022 will hopefully be expanding in terms of machinery and shop space. Right now, we have two locations, one for all of our woodworking. It's a very dusty environment. And mm-hmm. so all of our post-production work happens elsewhere um, in downtown, Vermont, or downtown Middlebury for the sanding and oiling, epoxying, and packaging. Um, Ideally, we'll be able to size up both those locations and also become a regular piece in a lot of local stores so that Mm. you won't be able to, you'll be able to purchase everything online, but also just go into shops in town 
um, across the state of Vermont and all the local ski areas. So ah. that's our goal for the next year. Wow. So that's a lot of marketing work. It's a lot so, of marketing. So who's going out to do all the sales? <laughs> I think it's all of us, effort, yeah. All, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for the hand to raise, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. no, and another part of what our goals are for 2022 is really expanding our connections with nonprofits and other organizations mm -hmm. who help people connect to the places that they love. So one of our first partnerships was with the Middlebury Area Land Trust, and we received a mm -hmm. second grant from Middlebury College called the Treehouse Fund to mm -hmm. help us design a tool to help the Middlebury Area Land Trust teach local youth about the trail around Middlebury, which is, uh -huh. you know, our big 18 mile trail, 17, yeah. or 17 to 19 Gee, miles, depending on who you ask. <laughs> and how lost um, you get. <laughs> right. Um, but we made a big model similar to the size of the one you have behind you mm -hmm. for them as a, as a teaching tool with the local oh, youth great. to learn about the trail. So we've really enjoyed that partnership and we're currently working with the Vermont, um, it's the adaptive skiing program oh, yeah. to create a two foot by two foot model of Sugarbush for yeah. visually impaired athletes to feel the trails on it before going out on a day on uh -huh. the slopes so they can really understand and connect with the landscape in a new way. So we're really trying to use our models as a tool, not only as a piece of art or something that you know someone will enjoy in their home, but mm -hmm. something that the larger community can connect with yeah. and really help to share their love of the place. Oh, I think that's great, and you and, and it really started that way too, as you said. It started yeah. with a gift, and I think you called it the Lesson Fund. Yeah, was that right? And is that still going, or was that kind of a short term? That is yeah. still going, um, and the funding is in perpetuity now. So forevermore, there will be students that's on great. financial aid at Middlebury College who can take lessons, um, rent gear for free, and really enjoy playing in the snow with their peers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a great thing, and nice, nice that you have all those collaborations, and you can combine your love of the outdoors and other people's love of the outdoors. It's very Vermonty. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so you're in two locations. That's got to be awkward. I, you know, if you're, if, would you, would you ideally like to be like in one, one space where you can do all of this work? Is that another long-term goal? Maybe not for next year, but you have a longer-term goal for that as well. I think. Yes, eventually. I think also getting our own space and really upgrading our machinery so we yeah. can, you know, first market, get the orders coming in, enough people who want uh, our models, and then, right. you know, buying larger machines so we can make more of them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the main goal. Yeah. Well, and certainly the first few years of starting a business, it's a lot of work. It's yeah, a lot so of we're work. learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, you need a lot of mentors, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You, so, Luckily we do. Yeah, so who, <laughs> I, I know you have Sarah, and uh, you had that course that you took. Uh, other other folks or groups that have helped you along the way? Oh, absolutely. There's so a, long <laughs> <laughs> a long list. Where do we start? Um, how about Alex starts and then whoever um, we forget why. Well, Eamon <laughs> uh, works at Middlebury College and he was instrumental in helping us build that first piece and really pushing us to go towards the business avenue and move away from uh -huh. gifts. Yeah, right. actually, Scott, who's help, been helping us out now and, you know, teaching us things uh, and you know, lending his shop to us, which has been really helpful to have that space. Yeah, that's great. Um, at Middlebury College, at the Innovation Hub there, Heather Lovejoy has been really instrumental in helping us grow our business, um, finding the resources that we need to get started. And also the previous woodshop that we were at was with the Butterfield family in North, North Middlebury. Mm -hmm. um, on, on Munger Street? On, on Munger Street. That's where I live. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so that one of their sons, I was involved with a mentorship program at Middlebury, and I was his big buddy for four years, and we had a really great relationship oh. and connection and so I, I reached out to his parents one day and it was like hey we're starting this business do you have any ideas of where we could move our wood shop and they were like yeah we actually have some space in our barn right now are you guys interested for the spring <laughs> so that was I think this spring without that I don't know that we would have ever been able yeah. to continue our business because yeah. we had no other spaces to put our machine and right. so really getting that support from the community has been huge and yeah. I, mean, I can't really overstate how important that's yeah. been yeah that's great, and and uh, I also applaud you for recognizing um, and being willing to ask for help because it really does take a large group of people to to help get anything launched off the ground. So yeah, um, and that was a, a large reason why we are still in Middlebury. A lot of our friends went to Middlebury College, graduated, and dispersed throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at different parts of Vermont. We looked at a wood shop in Pulteney and Burlington. Mm -hmm. And we just kept thinking about Middlebury because, as you said, it's this community that we yeah. know so well and we're well connected in. And it's really supportive and people are willing to help and when we need the help. And it's just great to be in, in a place yeah. where we, we know the folks and they mm -hmm. enjoy us being here and working here. That's great. 
All right. Well, we're getting close to needing to wrap up, but I want you to tell me what your favorite mountain or carving is. Mm. Well, my you favorite wanna... is definitely Lake Champlain. Okay. I can't get over the blue epoxy. Yeah. Um, the pop of that lake is just phenomenal. Yeah, that's and you beautiful. Get the mountains, you get the flat part of Canada, um, <laughs> and you get the blue, and it's it's stunning piece. That's great. Yeah. How about and Maddie, Daniel? Uh, so if you could pass me the Mount Desert Island. Sure. Please. Yeah, yeah, this one. Um, I like this one a lot because I went to Katie as a kid. Just we would camp there and hike. Yeah. Uh, and had a blast. So you know, you got Cadillac Mountain uh, over here and Door Mountain, and you know, it's just a beautiful piece. I really love the coast. Um, we've done a lot of lakes yeah. and rivers, but to have the ocean and kind of the blue epoxy ending. Yeah, there. I think it's really it, nice. it looks great. Sort of the reverse of the Lake Champlain yeah. one, and right. that must have been something to map. Yeah, <laughs> big, big project. This was yeah. a big project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then my favorite is actually the one that we're working on today. It's on the machine right now. Okay. It's the, of the state of Vermont. So it's yeah. a 3D carving of the border of the entire state yeah. with Lake Champlain included, and it's actually being gifted to Senator Leahy at the Vermont Outdoor Business Alliance first annual Trailblazer Award Great. on November 10th at Great. the Von Trapp Lodge. Oh, well, that sounds exciting. We'll look forward to hearing more about that, too. And Sarah, what, what do you want people to know about the Small Business Development Center before we go? Well, the first thing I was thinking is I think we have our next project, which is they're looking at expanding and machinery, so probably we'll be working on some cash flow in the next few months. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can see why my job is such fun. Uh, just wanted to say, you know, it's a, it's a delight to work with these gentlemen, and just for anyone who watches, if you've got a, an idea or you're just kicking something around and wondering if it could be a business, maybe you'll be an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> or, if you've, or if you've been in business, just I hope you'll take a look at our website and reach out. But Great. thank you very much. Okay. Robert. It's been really fun. Thank you all for coming today. It's just been really a blast talking to you. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Us. So that's it for now. My guests today have been Sarah Kearns, Area Advisor for the Vermont Small Business Development Center, and Jacob Friedman, Nathaniel Klein, and Alex Shem from Treeline Terrains. Thanks to MCTV for producing this show. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.